this is, this is, this is. Hey, what's up everybody? So how did you guys like MXPX Video Day? MXPX released a video playlist of our new record yesterday. You can find the full playlist on our YouTube channel, direct links at mxpx.com. Basically, you can watch our full album. So uh, it's something I wanted to do. It was just really fun. So uh, by now, I hope you've heard Best Life IPA. What? Yes, we're back with our second collaboration with Silver City Brewing. They're our local home area microbrewery. We're bringing you the best life. Uh, it's an IPA. It's really good beer. This will be available mainly via mail order here in the United States to 36 of our states. Simple math here says about 14 of you going to be mad at me. I apologize, but check it out. This is more states than we had last time. So we're actually moving up. It's the state laws that makes this really difficult. So we're in 36 states this time. We're going for it. Um, it's not going to be in your local bar in Connecticut. So East Coast, just saying, it's mail order time. Um, it's, it's, uh, the pre-orders are up right now at mxpx.com. The beer will not ship until October 12th. That's when we're going to celebrate its release because, that's right, I'm playing a show in Bremerton, Washington on October 12th for the release party. The newly reno uh, renovated Roxy, the Roxy Theater, has me out there. Uh, Silver City is presenting. Tom and Yuri and Chris are going to be there. They're going to be come, hanging out, telling stories. Chris is going to be opening up with some of his own songs. It's a full night of MXPX in Bremerton, but stripped down. So I do this all over the world, but I've never done it with Tom and Yuri, you know, and I'm kind of excited about it, actually, to get them up on stage to tell some stories and just to yuck it up a little bit. Um, tickets are up right now, and get this. Mr. Manager finally got his way. I'm really excited about this. I know he is, too, and I think you guys should be, too. There are no ticket fees. Um, that rarely happens in, in this world that we live in here. No ticket fees. Seriously, no ticket fees. So tickets are $25. You pay $25. No hidden fees. Easy. All right, moving backwards a little bit. I'll also be playing solo October 6th in Tinley Park, Illinois. That's for 350 Brewing's Punktoberfest. A lot of beer going on these this this fall. So Mad Caddies and Flatfoot, uh, excuse me, Mad Caddies and Flatfoot 56 are playing. Both great bands. Love both those guys. So um, I'm flying out to do that. I'll see you guys in South Chicago. Um, let's see. People are going to ask. So what about MXPX shows? Yeah, yeah, Mike. What about those MXPX shows? Let me think about it. So I'm just going to say Tom Chichilla keeps complaining that he's tired, he's overworked, he's got so much that we're doing with the Kickstarter and the album and all this. And I just want you to say, I just want to say, Tom, you sound like my two-year-old, and he doesn't even cry that much, but uh, <laughs> we're going to get through it. Just a little bit of patience. We have ideas and we have shows that we are working on. We're just not ready to announce yet. So thank you for your patience. Um, it's been an awesome year so far. And we're not going anywhere. So this is the life we love. This is the way we do. You know, you know what we do. So speaking of love, my guest today, it's my crew, the MXPX crew. And of course, some band members sneak in there for some stories too. It's, this is a crazy one. Um, this one gets a little poopy, a little poopy, a little pee pee, a little nuts, um, just a fair warning, parental advisory. So if you're listening, do not let your parents listen with you. You'll be very embarrassed. Um, I just keep it to yourself. Anyway, there's nothing terribly terrible about this episode, but it's just a lot of raunchy bathroom stories, bathroom humor, and it's the real deal. I, I, I can't believe some of these stories, to be honest, but it is the real deal. So, all right, well, <laughs> oops. I know uh, I was talking to Tom Chichilla about, you know, doing the, the podcast, and he's like, you should do it with the crew. You know, they love it. And, and he's like, and you give me a, you know, every story is about poo or pee. Like, I'm like, sorry, dude. But uh, it is a great one. So Tom Wisniewski's there. Yuri's there. Trevor Jackson. Tony Godino. Andy Alonzo. Brad Blanco's driving the van. Dave Lackey's filming. We had a great time in Texas. It was awesome. So uh, really enjoyed this one. So many fun stories. Join us in the van. I hope you enjoyed too. Don't you ever lose heart. Keep the fire burning or blaze. And don't call me crazy, it's just the way I was raised. There's moments like this that I'm gonna miss when I'm dead and gone in a 
So, so make sure everybody can hear your story because I want everybody to hear it. Okay. What happened last night? So I would like to start by saying Tony. That I slept for about two and a half hours last night. Uh, I spent the hours of around 2 a.m. until 5 a.m. just staring at the ceiling of our hotel room, just borderline furious that I couldn't fall asleep. Just so tired. Well, that was a good and good start th- to the day. <laughs> that's the way. That's pretty much the way it all. Uh, it all. This all started. So anyway, so it's about five a.m. Andy comes in. I don't know what the hell you assholes have been doing all night. Andy comes. Five a.m. I don't know, right? I don't think so. I mean, uh, three. More like three. No, yeah, three. Not you, but maybe three thirty at the latest. Maybe you come in at four. I'll give you four. I'll give you four. You come in at four. He lost time. <laughs> yeah, maybe you. Yeah, maybe you time traveled. But he was looking know. for something. I. So anyway, he comes in late, and at around 5 a.m., I'm still staring at the ceiling, and he gets up, and he walks over to the front door. I could see in his eyes, this is, not, this is an old story, because Andy Alonzo is, he pees, he pees. It's not always in toilets. We'll leave it at that. And so anyway, he walks over to the front door, and he's reaching for his midsection, his midriff. <laughs> And I think to myself, here we go again. You know, should have, why am I surprised? You know, going backwards, when I got into my hotel room, Andy was already down in the lobby waiting for people to go out and have, his, have himself a little night. And there was a note on my bed that said, Tony, you're the bestest tour mate ever, Andy. And when I saw that in my head, I thought, tonight's going to be wet. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, because there's something about that that just said, I'm going to go get drunk and come back and do something that going to test the bounds of our fucking friendship. <laughs> so, so he's, he's, he's got he's, he's hands on midriff. He's, hands he's, on he's, yeah, he's reaching for midriff. He's got that that thousand yard stare in his eyes. I know it's about to go. And I'm like, Andy, no. And he just starts going, it's pee-pee, it's pee-pee, it's pee-pee. <laughs> and I'm like, Andy, no. And he's pee-pee, it's pee-pee, it's pee-pee. And I'm like, I know what it is. It's pee-pee. Get the fuck away from the front door. So I've, I'm yelling I'm yelling at him he's, and he, he waddles over to the bathroom and he just goes he, and he's just like oh, just don't yell at me man and I'm just like god damn it and it worked and I'm like sorry for some fucking reason I'm sorry that I yelled at him because he's kind of adorable when he's like that honestly oh, it's yeah. weird it's like a it is it's kind of cute and then he just waddles over you know with his heavy feet just over to the toilet and he goes in the toilet and shuts the door and I'm like fine you know and I put my headphones back in it's all over all of a sudden it's like 15 minutes later. I forget he's even in there because I'm just staring at the ceiling, praying. Oh, I forgot to mention, I was just drifting off after two hours of praying I could go to bed. Just drifting off when Andy did that. So that was like, you know, it was pretty, now you're it was awake. pretty angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I put my headphones in. I'm trying, trying, trying to go back to sleep. And all, all of a sudden, all I hear is just like bronco snoring. Like just like some sort of large animal is asleep in the bathroom. <laughs> And I'm just like, what the fuck? That's not real. I take out my headphones and I'm like, he's on the t- he's on the pot. And I smell him. I smell. He took a giant shit and fell asleep, <laughs> snoring to high heaven. And I, w- I walk in and I open up the door and he's just just elbows on on knees, just he- head in hands, Ooh. just just snoozing like a little angel. Like a was little Mexican like full angel. on doing the thinker on the toilet. No, no, like yeah, it was like it was like, like double thinker, full palm thinker. If, does that make sense? Like, so like two hands. So like cup, cupped hands, yeah. face, just sleeping peacefully. I almost oh. didn't want to wake him. He looks. Was so there good. any pee on the floor this time? Though? He, so, in his defense, all excrement and urine made it into the toilet. Bravo, uh, bravo. Good job, Andy. I would I would argue you guys are seriously missing the point here, but <laughs> whatever floats your boat, I guess. And that's uh, I, I one of the one of the <laughs> one of the several Andy uh, peeing Andy sleep peeing. Does story. anybody else have a Andy story? A p- I've got one. You got one, Trevor. Yuri, you got one. Go, Trevor. Go. We were out in Nashville. We did what? Two nights at was it Exit Inn? Yeah. Did two nights at Exit Inn, and after the second show, everybody was feeling good. You know, we walked down to the bar. Andy had a bunch of Mexican beers, which Andy likes to do, and maybe a few shots. And he just kind of looks at me and goes, 
<laughs> and starts giggling and just looks at me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, are you fucked up, man? He's like, oh, man, I'm so fucked up. I'm going to pee somewhere tonight. <laughs> he, said he said it. He told me he was going to pee somewhere tonight. He's like the pee bandit. I think, I think the thing is that he likes doing it. Like, secretly, he likes peeing on things he's marking his territory i kind of like peeing on By things way, too but i just don't territory. actually yeah. do it everybody uh <laughs> i think everybody likes peeing on something oh yeah so right now you guys can't see this but we were driving oh. right by where kennedy got shot right here, in yeah. dallas we're at the grassy knoll yeah we're actually yeah and we're over the spot now we're driving here because we're, this is the way we need to go but yeah yeah heading out so hey back Back to my pee back story. To, back to story. So, so all right. So, so how could how so, could Andy possibly shoot two people with pee at one time? How's that? How's that work? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was terrible. It's been long enough, right? Like I can make that joke. <laughs> yes. <I'm laughs> it's okay. Horrible. Oh man. So, so we have a long night in Nashville. I can't remember if we did Waffle House beginning trip or not, but I don't think we got food, and we get back to the hotel. And Andy snores, like Tony has said, like someone I've never fucking heard of before. Like, it's, it's like, I don't know many people that can snore on the way out and in. And Andy <laughs> has that fucking talent. <laughs> so I have, my, I have my earplugs in because I know if I'm rooming with Andy, I'm not going to sleep. So I throw those in. <laughs> and I don't know why I wake up, but I hear the, the stomp. He does this little, like, five-year-old, like, I haven't really figured out how to work my feet yet. <laughs> kind of walk like drunk baby, only drunk Andy. And you just hear it slapping on the ground. I wake up, and I'm like, wow, where's he going? Where's he? Why is he taking his pants? That's my fucking suitcase. Oh. <laughs> so I wake up to Andy standing over my suitcase trying to pull his dick out to pee in it. <laughs> and midriff. I'm like. <laughs> touching midriff. Yes, touching midriff. I apologize. I'm like, Andy. Andy, what? Well, dude, don't pee in my suitcase. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, would it have been okay if he peed in his? Suitcase? Absolutely. <laughs> if it was his suitcase, I would have not have stopped him. I would have. Sometimes you gotta learn lessons the hard way. <laughs> yeah. You said that's yours. That's yours. We said that's yours. Isn't it kind of cute? It's the cutest thing Isn't in the world. Isn't it kind of cute? It's impossible. That's the worst thing about it's it. It's impossible. And he kind of looks like a little kid too. Yeah, like when he starts he giggling, it. so he just like looks over and he's got half open eyes and a little smile. And he's he said, "That's yours." Okay. But I gotta, I gotta pee. Got cherub, like, That's I, yeah, he does. I gotta, I gotta Aww. pee. And, and like, then oh, Andy, oh buddy. He goes. Yeah, he's like those Sour Patch Kids, because only he s starts sweet, and then he gets sour when he realizes that you're stopping him from pissing on oh, your yeah, shit. I don't, I don't, and he's like, uh, and he just goes, yeah, but I, I got, leave me alone. I just gotta pee. I'm like, yeah, just do it in the bath. Fine, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Rhodes does. Rhodes does uh, a thing where like he's like, where's mommy, daddy? Where's mommy? And I'll be like. She's at the store or whatever, and he goes, uh <laughs> Like every, like whatever it is, it's a, uh And that's like Andy's, is, he's got that vibe. If you don't let uh. Andy pee. He's a grown man. Yes. <laughs> we're going to let Andy respond, but we're not done with the stories. I think uh, Yuri I think had one. one. More, right? Yeah, it, it's not a pee story, but th this is a couple years ago. Oh, uh, um, okay. <laughs> after, after, after. It's a good story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. Not rated for the podcast. Not ready no, to it was like a, it was a late night, early morning after a weekend of shows, and Andy was giving me a ride to a friend's house, and uh, this is the first time I'd ever experienced. Oh, he wants to respond. Andy we'll let you respond after. And he, you know, it was a late night, lots of drinking, lots of good times, and so ready to go. Let's go, Andy. No, Andy. No, Andy in the lobby. Hmm. So I go up to his room, and he is way not ready to go. <laughs> And so, but yeah, it was weird. It was like he was that toddler almost. It it freaked me out at first, but then, but it's also cute, you know. I think we've all <laughs> we've also see, we've all seen the picture of Andy when he was probably like three or four years old. That's like who we picture. Yeah. He reverts right. He reverts right back to that. The yeah. second he's that kind of hammered. Yeah. You just look at him, and it's impossible to get angry at him. You yeah. just kind of want to hug him and be like, dude, don't pee on my stuff, please. <laughs> just don't pee on me. <laughs> Amazing. So you ready to, to Rebuttal. respond, to Andy? I'm gonna hand the mic up to you. Hi. What's up, Andy? Sorry, but sorry about this. This is like on blast. Hi, but mom. To, to, <laughs> I, I want to say one thing before you before you say anything right. before you respond. 
I, nothing's ever happened to me, so this could be all a hoax. This could be <laughs> fake. I don't know. You guys could be just spinning a yarn. But I will say, and I've never actually heard us live either, so I don't know if this is true, but I've heard you are a great sound guy. And you we take, sound amazing live because of you. You, you take the good with the bad, I guess, <laughs> at that point, you know? <laughs> a bit of smoke and fire kind of theory here. You like, know? sure, if it's one time someone's like, oh, dude, Andy peed on my stuff, maybe. But if it's every time we do a trip. Well, it's yeah. not every time. You know, we, we, definitely dis- we definitely discuss with people who are rooming with you, like, not leaving their bag open. Right. Bringing a rain jacket, you know, things right. like that. You know, it's like you go out into the woods and you got to, you know, prepare. You got to put your uh, all your food in that You're marking big, your you know, territory. I get it. You got to lock your food up. You're an so animal. The bears Andy. don't come get it. You know, just. I got nothing, gentlemen. I got nothing. Uh, we appreciate you, though. Andy, I got a question. What's that? Is this reserved solely for hotel rooms or does this go on at home? This is reserved solely for weekends with you guys, actually. It doesn't happen Amazing. at home. It doesn't happen in a hotel. It, it, it never happens. I might, I don't know, ask ask my wife. It, I don't I'm going to ask her next time I see her, for sure. I'll be like, I'm just going to grab her. I'll pull her to the side. I'll be like, listen, does Andy pee on things at home? Or do you guys have a dog? Not usually. No, no dog. No dog. Just well, we kid. should. I need a scapegoat. Because I have a hard time believing that you don't pee on things anywhere else except for our rooms and our luggage. I don't know what you guys floors. do to me. I don't know. I got nothing. We're just lucky. Yeah. So you guys. Hey, we yeah, have a good time is what we do. Let's, let's hear some So, uh, you know. <laughs> I just I was going to say you drink too much. Not yeah. like in life. I'm not saying you got a problem. You're a very nice man. You just, you just drink a lot when you do these shows and then you pee on things. I don't think it's a great mystery. I think you just it's a hurry up just and do like a lot ke- of drink and then you pee on things you're not supposed to pee on. <laughs> really just not that not difficult to understand <laughs> I, I zoned out there for a minute i was doing some things on my phone but is this are, are we talking about why um because i think i solved it maybe right we should talk about Let's why. move on next segment <laughs> next There's segment no, no deep-seated like childhood no no like, dude trauma. just pees on stuff just he you know, just likes to dude just likes whiskey so we should talk about <laughs> yuri got oh. tattooed last night lovely i was move not, on from p to tattoos. i was not there i was too busy why weren't you there because oliver missed you buddy Oliver missed you. Did he express that? He did. He said, "Did he really? Is that, was that I just out of, out of guilt for dis, completely disobeying my wishes?" Oh, he said it was awesome. He's yeah, like, yeah, thank, he definitely he's like, "Thank awesome. you, Tony. Thank you for letting my buddy, my my friend, stage dive." And I fought with all of my might to prevent that man from stage diving, and he said to me, "He said to me, no, you're good at your job. You almost stopped me." That's what he said. <laughs> no one, for the record, no to one's going to stop him. Sir. No one's going to stop Oliver. <laughs> Be careful Once Oliver it. decides that something's happening, there's no stopping it. You might as well just let it go and end it quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, real quick, let's just finish the story about Tattoo, but then let's get into the Oliver story uh, about, well, I know what it's about. So, yeah. Yuri, let's start with you. Finally, what, what made you decide you got a tattoo? You guys made me decide. <laughs> <laughs> It was yeah. that, it was that Kickstarter. I think that was the the final nail in my non tattooed body coffin. We're like, how do and we get uh, Yuri to finally yeah. commit? You got to get witnesses, but right? More you, witnesses. Didn't you win a tattoo from Oliver like in 2005 or something like yep. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, Oliver Pack was out on the Warp Tour and he had set up this like giant cornhole tournament with all the Warp Tour bands and stuff, and I won. <laughs> I know. <don't>. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the sporting type usually, but apparently cornhole's my <laughs> thing. <laughs> There's a good quote for the podcast right there. <laughs> for my athletic prowess, but in this case, I won. I think, I think just the statement, I'm not a sporting type, really drives the point home that you are not a sporting type. <laughs> well, I'm not much for sports ball, but I want to yeah. shit out of some cornhole. <laughs> so yeah, I never collected on the tattoo. Well, I won a tattoo, yeah. Never collected. Saw Oliver many times after that. Never mentioned that I still need my tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> now, but yeah, so, so the you Kickstarter. Had, you'd almost gotten, going back, you'd almost gotten tattooed a few different times. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there was... Uh, way back in the day with Sid in Southern California. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. This is, he wanted to give you a dot, and you ran away. Yeah, I know. It's so stupid, one, really. One little <laughs> dot, Yuri. <laughs> now, so now that I've experienced a tattoo, I'm like... Wow, I was being a real baby for like a few decades. <laughs> <laughs> it makes, you, it makes you think. 
think what else have you been missing out on? Your- I know, I know, seriously. I mean, let's, maybe let's, heroin let's is make really a list. Good. Let's make maybe a list. Maybe heroin's awesome. <laughs> is I'm there, sure. Is there is. anything you wanted to try? Anything else besides <laughs> tattooed? Piercing, I'll maybe? That. Piercing? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm good for now. I'm good for now. So I'm happy. You're using it straight from his first tattoo to like scarification and branding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's hang, that thing? Is it, what, you what do you hang? call it? Hang? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> yeah, hang. Yeah. Oh, the hook, the meat hook. Yeah. yeah. Yuri just shows up to the next show with the face sleeve. Yeah, face yeah. Tattoo. <laughs> face tattoo. Just, just go for like it. a missing member of Marilyn Manson. All of a sudden, <laughs> like, what happened to Yuri? <laughs> One tattoo, man. He's addicted. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, so I'm happy with it. Yeah, Oliver was fantastic, obviously, and. We've had we've had quite of, I don't know, a, a, a rich history with our friend Oliver. Um, oh yeah, it's funny, you know, like walking around Warp Tour. I was I was hanging with him a couple years ago on Warp Tour, and MXPX wasn't playing. This was like two yeah. thousands, like literally like three years ago or something. Yeah, and you know, of course, the show Tet- uh, Ink Masters is going strong, and I felt like people must feel like when they walk around with us because. People often get photos, they get uh, autographs, all that thing. They want to talk. And it's kind of annoying to walk around big crowds when people know who you are. And so, Warp Tour. Yeah. Yeah, people know who I am. Say what's up, whatever. Dude, walking around with Oliver, like you literally (laughs) get two two steps. Somebody stops him, takes a picture. What's up, man? Talks. Okay, two more steps. Like the whole time. Yeah. So he's he's definitely come a, a long way since we, but we knew oh, him yeah, way yeah. before. Oh yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he always had some panache or oh, yeah. some. I mean, that's why yeah. he's where he's at. He's he's got panache. He's yeah. not a sporting type, but no, he's got no. panache. Sporting type, isn't he? Isn't he skateboarder too? Yeah, he's, I mean, in that I guess in that respect, I'm a sporting type. I actually but, uh, have <laughs> a uh, I have an MXPX tattoo story and an Oliver Peck story at the same time. All right. The first time we did Dallas and we partied at Oliver's place, I got an MXPX tattoo from him. And then the next morning, I sent a photo of it to my brother. Well, I sent a photo of it that night to my brother. And he was like, oh, where'd you get it? I was like, oh, we're in Dallas, some shop. And he was like, he was like oh, I got a tattoo in Dallas a few, a few weeks ago at this shop. He told me, I was like, oh, yeah, same shop, same shop. And he's like, yeah, that's Oliver Peck shop. And I was like, who's that? And he oh. was like, he was like, oh, he's like he's on some show. He's a famous guy. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah. He's, and he started describing. I was like, oh yeah, this guy gave me a tattoo. And he's like, what was? His, he was like, it was Oliver. And I was like, yeah. He's like, that guy is famous. <laughs> and you got an MXPX tattoo from him at like 3 a.m. And I was like, yep, that's the story. Yep. And when we had a giant pizza party yeah. after that. Yep. <laughs> and every all night, Oliver kept walking up to me and flicking my cigarette out of my mouth so hard that it would explode against my glasses. Yeah. And I didn't like him. I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm not sure about you, bud. <laughs> but it was the the noise that the, the the that like noise he made after he did it was <laughs> redeeming the redemption. Yeah, can anybody imitate the <laughs> <laughs> like that that thing he does like that like I don't know what it is it's like a cowboy thing. I don't know. I love it. It's yeah. From Texas, it was a caca, but uh, it was redeeming. But yeah. So Yuri, you want to get into the story? Like we were out, we were out at a show at Nokia. Th- uh, arena, which is now what yeah. AT&T Theater or something yeah, like it changes know, all the time know. but out in Grand Prairie the, Grand whatever Prairie. the huge venue out in Grand Prairie is okay yeah Texas. yeah yeah. Oliver came out picked us up took us to the Texas State Fair I think that's right we went to the Texas yeah, State Fair yeah went to the, the fair fried walked Twinkies. around ate a bunch of fried garbage <laughs> felt like hell and so I don't odd. know why did we go downtown. We were driving downtown Dallas. I think we went to a shop or did oh, we go to yeah, a shop? Oh yeah, 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 that's probably it. Yeah, we went to Elm Street, and so then we're driving back out of town, and Oliver just starts going crazy. Like we, I, I remember flying into like a dirt parking lot, and he just started doing a ton of donuts. Yeah, we were doing donuts. Yeah, and donuts. This is in the city. Like this is in, in town, near it, Deep Ellum. Yeah, but. Yeah, and it's yeah, yeah, totally. So, yeah, just absolutely nuts, you know. Uh, yeah. And then we like shoot out into the road and go down this alleyway, and he loses control of the vehicle, and we end up slamming into a parked truck with a Tommy lift on the back. Yeah, and I remember it crushed in the side of his car, glass shattered, the the glass window shattered, and got all over him. And I think I was sitting behind him, got a bunch of glass. Yeah, and then we just took off. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we, we just left the scene. Um, and, I don't 
he almost hit a pedestrian. I don't think the wheels ever stopped moving when he hit the truck. I yeah, yeah, it just kept, like, going. kept going. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely wasn't a stop. It was like, what just happened? Yeah. You just hit something? <laughs> yeah, and he wasn't really perturbed by it at all. Like, we just drove to his house, parked that car, got in the other car, and, and went back to the venue. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> That's yeah. all over Peck for you, though, you know? Like, it's just crazy. Always amazing. Yeah. Always amazing. Yeah. I, I did a bike rider tour with uh, oh, Ben from Lucero. He does him and, and uh, Oliver. They get a bunch of guys together, and they'll get on motorcycles. So I flew out here wow. to Dallas a couple years. It was, like, maybe six years ago or something. And I borrowed a motorcycle from, like, one of their buddies' shops. They just had, like, rows of motorcycles. So wow. I, I'll take that one. Cool. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, man, you just, I was like, all right, is there a van or what? Like, they're like, nope, you, you just got to put everything <laughs> on your motorcycle. I'm like, whoa. So I had my acoustic guitar. Oh, wow. My, I had a backpack and I had a bag that had merch in it and like maybe a few extra things strapped to the back of that motorcycle. And, That's amazing. And we just went, we got kolaches, you know, at gas yeah. stations. And uh, it was just like, it was like that movie, you know, uh, what was that movie Free Riders easy, or Easy, easy Rider. Rider? Easy Rider. Uh, I felt great, but then was it a multi-day trip? It was. It was three days for me. It was. It was longer for them. It was like a week or oh, okay. something for them. Yeah. Um, and I did like three nights, three shows. Oh, cool. Because I had, you know, I had to do something else. But then I went back from Oklahoma City was my last night. I went back to Dallas by myself because everybody was going to continue on. Yeah. So I did a night night ride on the motorcycle wow dude and I went back to Oliver's parked bike in the garage slept and then took off that's amazing so it was, it was rad yeah that sounds awesome and uh the next you know the next day I got home I flew home and my back was just just broken like oh, I had man. to go to the chiropractor for like three days straight just oh, like wow. straighten me out All the- speaking of chiropractic I don't want to get on a weird topic is that is that real <laughs> is chiropractic real? Like, I don't know. It scares the shit out of me. Like I don't. I don't feel like somebody should be cracking your back and moving shit. Or, I, I feel like you just leave that shit. You leave it be, right? I don't know. I like. I I've done it, and, and I, I just feel like I only like to do it when my back's really messed up because I feel like then something's wrong. I feel like my back's always really messed up, and I haven't gone to a <laughs> chiropractor. I went and got a massage in Montreal. Uh, a normal massage in Montreal. Yeah. And, uh, Montreal, and you had to qual- qual- well. Everybody just it. looked at me. They're like, "Right, a massage." I'm like, "No, legitimately, it was a nice spa." I was happy at the end, but yeah. not the way you think. I mean, I don't so, know. I'll, I'll speak to the Cairo thing, right? So I got, I got like a lower back issue. Remember, lower back kind of kills me every once in a while. And I've gone, and it does work. And I know what you're talking about with the freaking out, because that cracking of the neck stuff. They grab your head and just like, I'm going to take this. This is mine now. Right? I have one eye. I'm not trying to walk yeah. around with a crooked back. Like, I feel like I can only have one thing. Right. But I tell you, it did work. It did, did it? work. So, I mean, like, just tell your chiropractor, like, I don't want you to do anything to my neck. You freak me the hell out. Sorry. There's a there's a, there's a a tool that some chiropractors use called an activator yeah. tool. Yeah. And it's like, it's like a, it looks like a corkscrew, but there's no actual, like, screw that goes into you. It's just like a rubber thing. Mm-hmm. And then there's a spring on it. And you... You hit it on different points on your back or whatever, wherever, really. Right. And it's supposed to be so fast and so much pressure that it it hits your whatever your your body before you can react to it. So, because your body has a tense to like want to reset. Yeah. Reset, you know, in bad ways that, that it's been used to, like you get bad posture or something like that. As I'm hunched over right now in the back seat of a van. Exactly. Like <laughs> we're talking about posture. Like, gu- <laughs> like my knees are at sticking. my neck right now, and there's a suitcase in my back. When we're done with this podcast, you can come up here. I appreciate you can it. Sit I'm on my lap. Comf- I'm comfortable. I think. <laughs> Speaking of which, last night. Speaking of sitting <laughs> on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> last night when we left the tattoo shop, uh, we went back to the hotel. I got in an Uber, and I was like, "There's no more seats." <laughs> <laughs> like, just get in. So I sat on Andy's lap. For you know, a couple only a couple miles, but oh, so so you sat on Andy's lap, who then tried to pee on the front door. So you really just dodged a bullet. I did. Twenty minutes later, he could be <laughs> peeing on you. Has anybody? Has Andy ever actually physically peed on somebody? Because I know he walked through it and got in bed with Tony. That's a good question because, you know, speaking of this this uh, this topic. 
Tommy Rat. Um, people f- from way back would know who he is. He's he was our old tour manager, sl- sound guy. So it's a sound guy thing for sure. He's a sound guy first, tour manager second, and he had an issue with being getting wasted, waking up, peeing on random things, and he did it. Some guy, one of the I, I don't remember who it was exactly, but it was somebody in another band that was touring with us. It was like, hey, bro, come ride with us, you know, for the night. Comes on our tour bus. He's in the back lounge sleeping, has his computer open because he was listening to something while he was sleeping. So he had his computer open, his laptop. Apparently, he wakes up. Why is my laptop all wet? My laptop's wet. Like, how is this possible? And he, he realizes it's pee. He gets so, he gets so pissed. He's pissed at Tommy. Tommy's pissed. For other reasons, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he denies it completely. Like I didn't do it. What are you talking about? Like, did you see me do it? No, I was sleeping. But he's like, then how? How do you? Who knows? Anything could have happened. Like he will go to his grave denying that he did it. I would have for sure blamed it on the air conditioning because you know how on the buses the air conditioning dumps water out of out of there from time to time. Yeah, I would have been like. Pfft. Nah, man, you know those air conditioning ducts? We were going through Dallas. It was probably really hot, humid, just waterfalls through. Sorry, man, not out of my dick. Oh, yeah. I mean, so it was. he was so pissed that we had to stop at a, tr- a truck stop, and his band met up with us. No. And he got out. Oh, my oh, gosh. He not with us anymore. He was done. Yeah. I'm out. Was, he, was he in a van? Is that why he jumped on with you guys? He, yeah, they were in a van, and they went, he was going to ride the bus and have a comfy ride. <laughs> like, That's a rough night dude. when you were so excited. Because doing a van tour, regardless, it's I mean, it's not easy living. So you get an opportunity to hop on a bus with, you know, whoever else. You're like, it's like Christmas, man. I'm going to go into So I'm sure he was, like, bragging to his buddies. Be like, yeah, man, I'm riding an MXPX's bus. Why are you back? Somebody peed on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> dude. I have uh, Someone? I, like, <laughs> all, all they hear is MXPX peed on my laptop. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. It doesn't matter who it is. And if there's anybody who's a crew or anything like that, remember that no matter what you do, it's never going to be you. It's always the band you're working for. So if you scream at a venue guy, if you piss on somebody's laptop it's never you it's always the band so mxpx peed on this guy's laptop and i'm sure he's saying that to this day yeah Yeah. oh yeah oh man but i feel like those peeing stories i have i won't say the band and i won't say the people involved but they had a tour manager who was like six five six seven massive dude barely fits in a bunk their drummer was maybe five 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 six little tiny dude Got really hammered really often and got up middle of the night, pulled the tour manager's uh, curtain back, started peeing on him. Wow. Just like standing there like he's at the urinal, just... What if he's like, avocado, avocado? <laughs> like, that's the safe, that's safe word. word. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he's all, I didn't know what to do. He's like, so I'm blocking... <laughs> the pee with one hand and trying to push him away with the other and then it just keeps shooting the rest of it and he was like how did you not kill it like you could have literally he was like man i was just so tired it's like wait hold on where'd you sleep the rest of the night <laughs> <laughs> and he was like i just kind of bundled up those sheets went in the back lounge got a new pair and went right back to bed oh, wow. he got peed on wow. this is a good tour manager that you can get peed on like your entire body and still kind of go oh, man i get it you're really drunk let me just put some new <laughs> sheets on i'm going back to sleep that guy is a saint on the same tour uh, he was in the middle bunk and the person on the top bunk started puking and you know the puke waterfall on a bus Oh yeah. On the top. Oh well i, I haven't personally experienced <laughs> it never, but yeah, never exp- not personally the puke waterfall I, I've seen a couple, and it's never a good time. I've seen a, a, a puke uh, pool yeah. in a bunk. <laughs> a computer, right? Yeah, let's, let, we should get into this computer? story. Let's, let, let's get into this story because we, we got to go back to earlier that day. That morning, we wake up in Bruges or something like that. Like, Where was yeah. this, Tom? Let, yeah. let's, let's tell the story. Tom, get in on this because Tom was a huge catalyst for how this day laid out. 
I, I wouldn't say I was a huge catalyst, but I was definitely involved. So <laughs> we were on deconstruction tour over in Europe, and uh, we had a day off the next day. And so we were at a show, and they had a bunch of beer, and we're like, hey, can we get some more beer? And they're like, yeah, of course, yeah. So we had 12 people on our bus, and we end up with 12 cases of beer in the back lounge. And so simple math dictates, well, everyone has to drink a case of beer tomorrow, right? Including the people who don't normally drink, like Yuri. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, so, didn't make it through the case, but I got pretty toasted. So Adam, our merch guy, and I, we woke up kind of early, and we rode into town. Yeah, or we, we walked into town, I guess, uh, just before we were riding. Uh, we walked in, we got some breakfast, and we came back, and we were hanging out on the bus, and everyone was kind of asleep or not there. We didn't really know. And we're like, well, it's like noon. Let's start, right? <laughs> and this is Europe, too. So this is warm beer we're talking about. There was a... Correct me if I'm wrong. Memory doesn't always serve correctly. Did we make a chart with all the people that were uh, supposed that to drink? That sounds and then, like, like something a, we would have yeah, done. Like yeah, like yeah, X out, exit off for how many? That drinks sounds like get. something we would have done. <laughs> so Adam and I are getting after it, and we're about done with our cases, and we still haven't really seen anybody. It's like a couple hours just sitting in the back lounge watching a movie or something like that, and uh, all of a sudden we hear like, bring, bring. We're like, what the hell is that? We walk outside, we're parked in some parking lot, the doors are open, we're trying to get some air through the bus. And there's like a couple of the guys from our band, a couple of guys from Strike Anywhere, and they've got these like Euro bikes. Yeah, just, like just bicycles. Yeah, just and they're like, jank. look what we found. We're like, what? Like, we found a rental place. It's like a half mile from We're like, take us there now. <laughs> so we go rent bikes and we roll back to the bus. Like, we need to get more people. We need to get a gang going at this point. And so we roll back and we get even more people. And I think when it was all said and done, we had about eight guys on bikes, like just full on like, you know, Mary Poppins looking bikes, right? You know, with little bells riding around, little baskets on them and stuff. We're riding through Bruges, Belgium, just being idiots, chanting I mean, USA, USA. <laughs> and like, It was an amazing day. I mean, picture there's parks, people are with their families having a great weekend. Yeah, Bruges is a beautiful city. It's beautiful. There's a huge cathedral like center area where we're like riding around and and there we That's are, the acting scene. like a bunch of drunk Americans. <laughs> yes, yes. So, we had a whole bunch of beer bottles throughout this whole thing, right? You know, 12 cases of beer. And uh, I'm passed out by this point, so I only hear about it the next day. But Yuri, why don't you take it from here? Yeah, so, yeah, the day goes on. Yeah, the, uh, let me, let's switch mics. The, uh, the sun is setting. Everyone's sleepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're still we're still we're still kind of raging, a few of us, because I didn't get through my beer either. Yeah, I think I had two. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it even better. Yeah. We I don't know. I mean, so so you know, there's there's a a parking lot. There's a can, a canal on one side with uh, with a boat boats in it that we broke into. Broke into. <laughs> uh, we weren't the first one. It was our crew guy. One of our crew guys broke into All it. All we had to do was slide a window. So and then we didn't, like, okay, like we'll damage go. anything. <laughs> Very respectful break-in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was break in light. it was the break-in light. <laughs> it's a polite B&E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is all past the statute of limitations, I assume, right? Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> Except for the pee story from last night. It's still yeah, alive and well. Let's, let's prosecute that one. So... One side is is of the parking lot is you know canals and, and there's not like people on the boats or anything they're they're closed up for the weekend or for the night I think, and and on the other side of the parking lot is just a, a slight wooded area before it gets into the town right yeah yeah we, yeah we were just sort of in a bus parking lot yeah yeah just all day so we start playing baseball not like full on like baseball t ball t ball <laughs> yeah but. Where did you guys find a tee in Brussels? Uh, yeah. like, it, it was a post. It was so it was a wooden post. Yeah, it was a yeah. post in a parking lot. <laughs> wooden post, beer bottles, tons of empty beer bottles, and a stick. Yep. <laughs> this, is, this is what our night. <laughs> and so we all just start hitting beer bottles, smashing beer bottles off this post. <laughs> all, right, all right, let me let me try this. <laughs> like, you, like, like that was a challenge because we yeah. were all so toasted. <laughs> Can you hit this thing that's not moving? Did anybody, did anybody do like the Philadelphia Phillies thing where you put your head on the oh, on the yeah. bat, spin around a bunch of times, and try and hit the beer bottle? Oh. I think we were already there. Yeah, <laughs> just drunk enough to where that just yeah. you bypass that whole yeah. thing. Yeah, You're like, you know what? We don't need this. <laughs> uh, we're fine. Equivalent. We're fine. Yeah, totally. 
And also, for those of you who can't see, neither can our driver because it's pouring <laughs> down rain right now. Those torrential downpours, the, the gully washers, they call them here in Texas. <laughs> gully washer. Oh, nice. it's coming down a gully washer. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah. The Brussels. The Brussels. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so we're getting to the, the climax. <laughs> so Yuri's up to bat. Yeah, so I'm up to bat. I miss, believe it or Swing not. Swing and a miss. Swing All right, miss. strike one. It happens. Yeah. I mean, Try again. You are not a sporting fellow. I so. am not. Yeah. I'm not. Three. Yeah, three. exactly. Okay, that's good. Is that? Oh, okay. Okay, it's yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's three strikes. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is like, so it's like rounders then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, the... Uh, I really wanted this bottle. I, I got after it. Like I, I eventually did knock it off, and just to teach it a lesson, I was beating it into the ground. Like the broken office space style. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is how how I With remember it. How I remember okay. it, and yeah. I could remember it wrong, was you missed a few times, I, and then out of anger, I was just it, beating. You you kind of hit it, but it fell on the ground, and it was still oh, intact. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yep. And so yep. you're just like. I gotta get this bottle. Yeah. You start smashing it on the ground. Smashing the bottle. My uh, depth perception wasn't the best right then and there. And I was also smashing my hands into the ground, which was just full of all the broken glass from all the other bottles that we'd been hitting. And it took a second to realize that I was like, why is my hand all bloody? You know, <laughs> I was like totally cutting my hand up with all this broken glass. Yeah, good times. So picture Yuri, <laughs> hit, hit, like he's going crazy on this bottle. Like, like you would do after you miss a few times, yeah. not realizing, oh my God, I'm yeah. just like smashing into the glass. I still have those scars. Pic- picture Die Hard the movie, <laughs> yeah. the first movie, yeah. when he's running barefoot across all the broken glass. Yeah. Oh, that was Yuri. Uh, uh, yeah. What's that? that? That is a Christmas movie, by the way. Oh my God. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, some people say it's not. I would say Bruce Willis says it's not, but... I say it's it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, for sure. It's just like it the best Christmas happy, movie yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I had ended up having to wrap my hands up in like a questionably clean towel and duct tape or electrical tape and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good time. Make sure. And then the next day we were playing in like London or something and all those scar all those cuts and stuff were just opening up so my pants were like covered in blood. <laughs> The show must go on. That's right. Dude, I love the dedication. Like, m- most of these stories would kill the average person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or make them completely rethink all of their life decisions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. just laugh and keep going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's best not to think about it too much. If you, if you don't laugh, <laughs> you're going to cry. Uh, I remember, af- like, that night in, in Bruges, if, if I'm not mistaken was the same night that Adam, our merch guy, Adam Hunt, puked on his laptop. One of the times. I think, he's, I think he's puked on more than one computer. That's very true. He has. Like, we have all these, like, like we got the puke guy. We got the pee guy. We got, oh, we lost our pee guy. We need a new pee guy. <laughs> so we're interviewing Andy for sound. Like, how's your pee situation? <laughs> <laughs> so listen, will you, will you pee over under? Are you going to pee on... Five out of ten trips, or is this a nightly thing? Oh, so you guys just have guys. You got the puke guy. Wait, hold on. We had the I, I actually, guy. We got the one eye guy. <laughs> you have the one eyed guy. Damn, I'm that guy. <laughs> um, so, how does one pee or puke on their own computer? Is he like dedic- that dedicated he to work, the- where he's like drinking and trying to put in numbers and throw up on himself? <laughs> like, what's going on here? He had passed out. Yeah, he had the he had the computer on his pillow, and passed <laughs> out, and just just like one movement, just blah, right yeah. all over his computer. Yeah, I think this is the move: is laptop sitting on the la- uh, on in your bunk, and you come, you're you're wasted. You stumble in and just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. bah, bah. all over. Wakes up, we're just like, oh my god. He's like, I know, man. Like, uh, so it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay, I got uh, Apple Care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got Apple Care. Uh, 
And that's in Europe. Like, you're screwed. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But he's done it in the U.S. as well. I mean, if you're going to do it once, you got to get both sides of the world, right? You can't just make it a Euro thing. Yeah, yeah, full coverage. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, mishaps and crazy stories. I mean, I'm trying to think of a few. I mean, this isn't crazy, but what's that? I have a bus flooding story. Oh, dude, let's hear it. Again, I won't say the band. I, I pretty much I, I'll see if I know what guys. band it is but <laughs> <laughs> I won't say the band but we were out on a, on a tour why not why don't you say the band yeah, you just, don't want them don't to know about want, it I, I don't work with the band I, nah I'm just All gonna right, leave it you alone. don't have to say I'm gonna leave it alone um, band that people have heard of yes, for sure they've, they've heard of them so we're in god I, I wanna they've done see. rock albums and maybe even a country album <laughs> anyway go ahead <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna know even that's gonna like throw people way Listen, off people like, are gonna be hitting up hootie and be like yo man so tell me about that time in your bus dude the one i got spilled the story on my career's podcast um so you know tearing down the show and the band was support on this so it was like a, it's quick easy it was like a 30 minute set it's kind of like a vacation tour tearing down everything's fine and one of the guys comes walking off the bus and just looks at me and goes, bus is flooding, <laughs> and walks by. And I stop like dead in my tracks and go, what? So, yeah, bus is flooding. Well, are you going to, nah, man, not my job. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And keeps walking away. And so I stand there for a second and go, nah, it's not, I mean, flooding, like how bad could it be? I got my answer. I, <laughs> So I opened up the the bus door. Oh jeez. Um, I opened up the bus door, and I look, and we got a mini waterfall rolling, and like, like right out the gate, you like open right the door out, and I open the water's the gate, coming out, and it's like you know how because on the bus there at least it's not a puke waterfall. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> We're getting there, Yuri. So there's a. So I walk, and I'm like, well, this can't be good. So I keep, I walk up and there's like a nice little lake that's forming in the front lounge. Oh my God. And then I find the problem is coming obviously from the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Toilet. There's a long standing rule, you know, on buses. You, oh yeah. No one, you don't take a, sh- you don't take a shit on a bus. Right. Unless the bus driver tells you it's okay. <laughs> I had one force me to do it. He wouldn't let me bag it. He wouldn't let me, he's up. Like, nah, man, we were doing like a long drive yeah. through Texas. And he was like, nah, man. He's all, man, I poop on the bus every night when you guys are sleeping. Just poop, poop, <laughs> and screaming at me. To poop. Have you ever tried to poop when someone's screaming at you? It's not easy. <laughs> really not easy. Um, but that was in this situation. So I you walk up. You have to up. train for that kind of thing. I think you do. Like It's like shock training. and, and uh, <laughs> Andy, your, Andy. Your, your time in the sun is gone. <laughs> so I walk up, and I'm like, and there's water just pouring out of and there's not a lot of water on buses like bus tanks it's not a ton like you run out yeah. of water all the time apparently we just filled up and this was just going and i was i was just a tech and we had a tour manager at that time and at that point in time i saw a little bit of toilet paper but there was also something else stuck in there that i couldn't quite make out and i was just like This ain't my job either. <laughs> <laughs> so I get on the phone and I text the tour manager. Hey man, bus is flooding. <laughs> oh man. And I just see, and he's like on a full sprint and comes in. So now we're both standing there, like water's, you know, splashing around on our feet. And I got the water to stop because like the toilet was basically on the bus toilets. You know, it's kind of like an RV. If yeah. it's, if it's something's blocking that bottom part open, just water just runs. Yeah. So we got that going. And now we're like towels and everything, trying to get it all cleaned up, trying to get everything cleaned up. And uh, I'm looking over at our tour manager. I'm like, okay, we're at a venue. There's toilets everywhere. All of these guys have been touring since they were like 16 years old. There's no way none of them. And I'm like, what could possibly be in there? So he throws on gloves and like, all right, let's take a look. And starts pulling stuff out of the toilet. A little bit of toilet paper. And then this purple thing starts coming out. And it's stringy and lacy and panties. Oh. There was a couple <laughs> a couple people on the bus. You know, it was a party and everything like that. Apparently, one of the girls decided to flush her fucking panties down the damn toilet. And then got it clogged, panicked, 
ran out, no pants on still. Because we walked around the corner, she was hiding behind the bus with no pants on, crying. And I'm like, what's, and we go around, we're like, um, did you flush your panties? <laughs> and she's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed. I was like, why didn't you tell anyone? She's like, well, I told that guy. I'm like, the guy that walked by me said the bus is flooding. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. So she, when she like panicked, she ran out, left her pants on. I don't know why. I don't ask any more questions. Did you ever get to why she actually flushed her panties? I don't know, okay. but right, I right, have right. a feeling there was an accident involved. Sharded. She and sharded, for sure. They, they didn't look... They looked noticeably used. <laughs> so... That was that was the bus flood of two thousand and something. <laughs> oh my god! We we had a situation where, yeah, you know, you have guests on the bus and the same old thing. Explain the toilet rules, and, and this guy misunderstood what we were saying. I went in there. He went in there, and I I went in after him, and it, and it smelled like shit. And I was like, what the fuck? And uh, he had. <laughs> I think he just he thought, oh well, the toilet paper doesn't go in there. I can still shit, then, but because he put all the oh, toilet paper no. in the garbage can. Oh, no. <laughs> How so do I was, not know about oh, this? Man. How do I not remember this? Oh, yeah. When was this? It's like twenty years ago. Oh, it was a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a Portland Warp tour. Yeah, somewhere. Forever, it was Billy. Yeah. It was Billy Idol. I don't want to name <laughs> it, person. <laughs> But yeah, that was great. Can we go? We can go one more, uh, one more bus poop story. Dude, this is the best podcast ever. <laughs> yeah, let's go. So another, uh, another buddy of ours who was out on warp tour and uh, had some stomach issues, and woke up, and just had to go, and couldn't stop it, and shit himself in his bunk. Wow. So he was trying to be real quiet about it and felt bad and just he was like, man, it was everywhere. I was, he was sleeping in like Adidas pants and it was just all over every he was like it was so horrible so i like slid Ooh. out of my bunk and then just felt it sloshing down the back of my legs he's like i get to the front lounge and i realize that our bus driver's wife was traveling with us he's also i'm standing in the front lounge listening to the two of them talk thinking i'm covered in my own shit i gotta get this cleaned up somehow I don't know where I'm going to put this. So he goes in, grabs a trash bag, and he's like full on. He's like, all right, trash bag, baby wipes, sanitizer. Okay. Gets in there, gets in, takes it all off, puts everything into a trash bag. And was like, okay, so what, what am I going to do with this now? He's like, I can't throw it in the trash because it'll stink, you know? And, you know, I don't want to really tell anybody that I shit myself in my <laughs> bunk. So he does all this, and he's like, and I can't. He's like, I would just walk up there and just toss it out the window. He's like, but I open up a window. So he's having this whole, like, internal crisis of how to handle the situation. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go lay down in my shitty sheets. <laughs> I'm going to oh. put the bag in my bunk and just try and go back to sleep. So he did. Got up. Bus stopped in the morning. You know, war tour, you roll in at, like, what, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah gets in waits you know waits nobody else is up yet here's the bus driver leave hops out sheets poop bag everything out the door goes so he's going gets it gets it all taken care of kind of goes about his business for the day bus driver comes back at the end of the night and he's like i gotta tell you something man he's like stomach's really messed up i didn't want to shit in the bus he's like so i was trying to hold it and i was shitting myself and he's like, I knew your wife was on the bus. and I didn't want to, like, present this whole issue with your wife here and everything. He's like, oh, man, my wife flew home yesterday. You could have told me. I would have pulled over. We could have gotten you all cleaned up and, you know, got you new sheets and everything. So oh, out, of, out of him being polite and trying not to let bus driver's wife figure out, he slept in his own poop pretty much oh my god that is gnarly that is <laughs> so this, this this sort of this is not a but a touring story but so we uh this is while we we're mixing slowly going the way of the buffalo okay i got really sick food poisoning from a thai place 
And we were staying with Larry Weintraub, our A and R guy from A and M. Yeah, way back in the day. What's up, way Larry? Back. And so I was staying in his guest room, and I shit my pants, and he had to clean it up. He had to clean it up. <laughs> Wait, why did he what? Clean it up? Why did he have to clean it up? Because I was so out of it. I was like, I, I couldn't even hardly move, and it was like a fart, you know, like a For wet. A <laughs> hey! But yeah, he he was a gentleman, and yeah, took care. He really went that extra mile. There's so much <laughs> about this life I don't know about. I've been living in just complete <laughs> ignorance. Has, has anybody? Uh, we might as well stick with the poop. Has anybody used a trailer? You know, like the triangle on the trailer, as as a toilet. Uh, I think Chris from Less Than Jake has. That is but my. Not I. That is my go-to when we were van touring. It's like, you know, it's like a porta potty. Yep, you can so just sit on there. You just and you sit put on there, and you know, you can wipe it down so you don't get the grease on the old balls and everything. But yeah, it's like, so we were on the road, and I was, I was thinking, I was like, man, you know what, McDonald's uh, milkshake sounds really good. So I drank the milkshake, and I was like, man, yeah, McDonald's, same McDonald's, right? I eat like garbage, so, <laughs> um, and uh, so I was like, man. Man, a soft serve sounds really good too. Oh God! Like, cool. Don't say soft serve. <laughs> so I eat the soft serve, and I was like, I should probably have some real food. So two McDoubles. Come on, let's do it. I eat that like 30 minutes into the drive. Stop. Dead traffic. Like accident on the freeway. Two lanes. Completely shut down. And you know that feeling you get when everything goes from your stomach and drops to right above your butt. And it's like you have to go right now, uh, and I just look and I start sweating, and I got like the I got the dump bumps like trickling down my arms like the goosebumps type of thing. <laughs> dump bumps. <laughs> <And> <laughs> so I'm, so now I'm like I'm like dude, I'm all I'm looking on our phone and I'm like hey, hey, hey how long how long is this how long are we gonna be stuck in this traffic and it's just red red as far as my eye can see just red and I'm like okay okay. You can make it. So we had like bunks built into the van. So I'm just laying back there and I'm like, keep moving and keep kind of trying to position. Pants are completely loosened now at this point, unbuttoned. I'm like, no pressure on my stomach. Finally, I'm like, pull it over, guys. They're like, what's wrong? I'm like, pull it. I got to poop. Pull it over. They're like, come on. So we pull over, van and trailer. Nowhere for us to go. And we're like on a side of like a cliff area. So I can't like walk into the bush or into the desert or anything. Yeah. Time to uh, pony up to that old trailer <laughs> triangle. Trailer triangle. <laughs> and sit and poop. I I left my back to people so I didn't have to stare at them <laughs> while I was pooping. But sitting on the side of the road on the shoulder, having the worst dairy McDonald's chili looking turd pile of my entire life like it's one that you know how you have some of those moments where you're like i can't believe that came out of me well that came out of me with about a car creeping by at one mile an hour staring at me and then you know the the scene <laughs> the traffic yeah because of the traffic so and there's nowhere for me to go so it's just me sitting there with a shirt <laughs> pants around my ankles pile like it was bad and it's on youtube too um <laughs> yeah there's there's the rest of this um so yeah so so we're doing that and then so you got to wipe and i had some wiping and no place for it to really go and it's a kind of a heavy heavy wiping ordeal um and uh so you know was it that that movie american was it american beauty the one with the roses and yeah, like uh, the, yep, so you know the the plastic bag that's so that like yes. just kind of does a spin. So I'm sitting there, and one of the doo doo paper <laughs> just starts taking off and doing the American Beauty like into traffic. <laughs> Lands on a car. On a car. <laughs> um, was Amazing. Paper pristine or was this used? Oh no, it was used. Doo doo paper. Oh my God. It was doo doo paper. <laughs> Just like spinning and then going and people driving by and it was just like so, it was so bad. So at that point in time, we were, you know, YouTube had just kind of started going. So with our band, so we were making videos like day in the life, tour story videos. That became a tour story. 
So when I was dating with now my ex-wife, I met, I went to meet her family for the first time and they were like, oh, so what's he do? He's in a band. So like, oh, okay. So look up his band. Oh, here's videos on YouTube. Oh, here's the new guy pooping in public on the side of a freeway. (laughs) That's how I met the family for the first time. That was the first thing out of grandma's grandma's mouth. I saw you pooping on the side of the road. (laughs) Of course you did, Grams. Yeah, great. Wow. You know what? We called it a day after that. Thanks, Trevor. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else to add to this podcast? It just, Can anyone top that? I it mean, just reminds that story reminds me of uh, an old uh, tech of ours was uh, on the New Jersey Turnpike with his girlfriend. Oh yes. At, late, late at night, coming back from the city, and had he, to go. he had to go. And uh, so he pulled up. They went through a toll booth, pulled over the side because there was a small building there. Went in there. Door was open, but like nothing. It was just like a hallway. He had to go so bad. That he just he sat on top of like a radiator type thing and just went into the radiator, <laughs> and he had n- nothing obviously to wipe. So he t- took his socks off, <laughs> wiped the socks, threw them behind the radiator, and got back in his girlfriend's car. And they just kept going. <laughs> you know, you know that, <laughs> that sock wiping thing. You know, you got two bullets in your gun, and that's yeah, it. Like yeah. you got to make those count. Like those, those are like. The most precise like wipe you've ever had in your life. <laughs> I feel like if you do it right, there there's so much stretch in socks. You can turn them inside out. Yeah. <laughs> you can, like stretch it, maybe go from foot to heel, and then from ankle to top, inside out, foot to heel, ankle to top. You can probably get four you're to six wipes out talking, of this. You're talking about basically flossing your ass today. <laughs> I'm talking about full panic. I need to clean this out of me. I will make this work. And if this doesn't work, I'm going shirtless. You know, I gotta say, like having kids, poop doesn't bother me anymore. Oh yeah, like, it really you, doesn't. You've seen it all. Yeah, it doesn't really. A lot I mean, of these stories remind me. Of, oh yeah, I've done that with my kids before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the shit all the way up the back. Oh yeah, I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I fully get it, but we're adults. I know. I have a photo of of my kid one of my kids i don't remember which one just fully covered full back <laughs> all the way up to like her neck yeah. i think it was sailor oh yeah totally. <laughs> oh my God. i've done that pull uh, this is an azlin was just a baby pull her out of her car seat and it's just a strip yeah the whole her entire i was like oh my god i, I remember changing uh god azlin we were flying with her and she was like one maybe and she'd shit her pants and we had like a super tight connection we just had to like sorry you're gonna have to sit in it you know and we're like Ooh. get on the plane it's hot and you know it's like they haven't got the ac going on and she's just standing there in a full diaper full diaper and everyone around us is like assholes like <laughs> this poopy baby yeah yeah and there's like so i would change her once we took off and all that i went and changed her and uh they just have this like little fold down tray table in the the toilet, and so I like yeah. kind of jammed her on there, and she's just kind of looking at me, you know. Like, <laughs> dude, I've done, I've changed a baby in a plane, dude. It is so crazy. You're like, okay, it's, don't fall, like, yeah, it's, all right, it's not really set right up for it at all. <laughs> and airplane bathrooms are not a general area where you want to touch things, anyways. Right? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so have you ever have you ever changed them just in your seat on the tray? Or did you actually go to the bathroom? This was in the bathroom. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone, if someone changed their dirty diaper <laughs> in the seat next to me on a plane, I'd freak out. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some horrible things on planes. That wouldn't surprise me. I feel like... Yeah, but you were, you were freaked out by someone taking their shoes off. Like, I get, I get it, but this is a dirty diaper, man. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I'm just saying, did you see that guy's feet? <laughs> pee diaper, though. Pee diaper would be okay if you changed. Sure, sure. But... The baby starts while you're changing yeah. and you just got the pee waterfall going on. <laughs> Fresh air on me, I'm just going to let it loose again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that happened to me, actually. Uh, my son, when he was a baby. Well, he's still a baby, too, but sure enough, like, you, oh, you know, the air, yeah, yeah. pee in my eye. Yeah. Oh, oh, damn. It was good. Oh, I mean, it, I didn't. my eye didn't get hurt it's or sterile. anything. Like, my eye's fine. <laughs> <laughs> pee eye. My kids eye peed on. My kids as I peed on still gets to keep it. I just wake up in the morning and lose mine. That's nuts, man. Do you want to tell everybody how you lost your eyes, so in case they're wondering, and then we'll just 
really boot cap it. All right. This the was, subjects of this podcast. I was really. Yeah, how are you going to put this together? I'm basically going to like. I'm going to front headline it. This is all about poo and pee pee. <laughs> just get ready. <laughs> Something. I'm just going to let people know ahead of time. This is, this is going to have to be a full disclaimer. It's going to be you very serious, just sitting in front of like. Okay, guys. Poo cast. Poo cast. P cast. <laughs> my career <at> poo cast. <laughs> All right, so my eye story. I'll try and keep it brief because we've said so much. Um, (laughs) So this is probably not going to be brief. Uh, So anyways, um, I was 23 years old, and I woke up with an eye infection. I went blind in 36 hours. They don't know how how it got there, what happened, what caused it. They still have no answers to it. But basically, I woke up in the morning, and it felt like my eyeball was kind of... It felt like a fingernail grew on the inside of my eyeball oh, okay. so, or my eyelid. So every yeah. time I blinked, it felt like just somebody was pissed off and just scratching me. So I'm like, oh, man, this isn't right. So I keep washing it, keep washing it. And they call my brother. is like, hey, man, something ain't right. He's like, oh, you know, just keep it. if it gets bad, you know, whatever. So half day goes by and I'm like, this isn't right. And so I call him. And at that point, I was hiding in the bathroom in a corner because it was the darkest place I could go. Door shut. And just in crazy pain so he finally takes me to urgent care because i didn't have insurance and you broke musician you know great america woo. um so yeah go do that and they, they take one look at me they go not here man go to the hospital it's like okay first doctor turned me down let's try another go to the hospital they start looking at me they're like um okay we got to call this person in this person in this person in what'd you do where'd you go do you want morphine yes and uh, <laughs> and she's like, you want it in your arm or in your uh, in your butt? I was like, right in the keister. Let's get this done. Um, so the doctors start going. And by that time, basically, if I were to look at you, Mike, it would be you would be kind of a white silhouette. So like a white film kind of went over my eye. Okay. At that point in time, and so they're talking to me, and she goes, you know, how, how old are you? I was like, ah, twenty three. They're like, you sexually active? I was like, yeah. You know, and start going through like all the stories. It's like, look at me. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you interested? Because I could do something to take the focus off this pain. Um, so she goes, "All right, have you been tested for AIDS?" And I was like, "I mean, yeah, I've been tested for everything. I was clean." She was like, "Well, doctor comes in, checks me out, and goes, listen, man, you know, I've never seen something like this happen to a healthy 23-year-old.'" I was like, "Rad." He goes, but I've seen it in AIDS patients. I'm like the record screeches. And I go, what? <laughs> he goes, so we need to test you for HIV. Um, and they start gloving up. Like this was before the AIDS test comes back in like a second, you know? So they're gloving up, putting on suits. And they're all, you know, from here on out, we have to treat you <laughs> like you have AIDS. <laughs> I was like, so let me get this straight. I'm losing an eye and I might have AIDS. And he's like, well... Yeah. So, <laughs> so I get the test. So, you know, and we go through, it's like a whole, whole ordeal. They send me home. They dis, they gave me the wrong medication. So you can either do steroids or antibiotics to treat what I had. And they gave me steroids and that was wrong. It fed the infection. I went completely blind, like just gone. Uh. Um, so they kind of, they wouldn't admit me to the hospital because I didn't have insurance back and forth. And finally the doctor in two weeks later walks in and goes, no AIDS. So that was awesome. That was kind of great. He's all, but we still don't know what to do with your eye. So I had AIDS for two weeks, which was, I mean, hey, me and Magic Johnson, we beat AIDS. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, That's so insane, they, they finally admitted me into the hospital. And my body, when I got to the hospital, I was in L.A. County. And that's a whole other story. I had inmates on one side. I had a um, homeless guy who was, that dude had the best stories. And he would always eat my food because I wasn't hungry. He's like, can I get that? I'm like, hell yeah, man. Just keep telling me stories. Um, and then we had an isolation room. So where they would have like full hazmat suits. It has like two doors. So nobody can go in. Well, one night I wake up, just like Andy peeing, isolation booth dude decides that he wants to go take a walk. Opens the door, leaves the door open, starts walking around the room. And he's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm getting really bored in there. don't have anyone to talk to. He's like, uh, aren't you supposed to be in there for a reason? He's like, I mean, I'm not going to get it again. Literally what he said to me. What? I have no idea what he had. 
So, anyways, um, I'd say this long story short, this has just got long. But no, yeah, there's like a, an end thing like that. There was a dude who came in, and I, I probably shouldn't even tell this story, but like he called his buddy and he was like, I think I killed him. Come pick me up. I'm at LA Con- County. And he like rips his IVs out. And I'm just laying there, like, don't hiding. notice me. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't look. Dude pulls out his IV and hits the door takes off running cops come in looking for him he's gone they're like have you seen this guy did you hear anything i'm like uh, i i don't know what's going on so that was like Does it look endless like i can see yeah <laughs> <laughs> why'd you guys put him in the right side bed i can't see shit over there um so i had my first surgery and i went into cardiac arrest during my first surgery and what they basically and they brought me back and then the surgery was they t- cut off the front of my eye put a slit in it and then cored out everything on the inside so took out my retina my pupil and cauterized my optic nerve then they packed the eyeball they left the white of my eye and packed the eyeball with antibiotic gauze and then they leave the front of my eyeball open to leave the gauze to hang out so it would drain so the infection would drain out so i come out of surgery and they didn't tell me that they were going to tape my eye shut so we were joking going in, and I was like, hey, guys, you know, I'm going to lose the eye. Great. Just make sure you do the right one, asshole. And he was like, nah, we got it. We ride on. Not this one. Take this one. I was like, okay, cool. So I wake up, and they tape this eye shut because your eyes moved together, and they didn't want this eye to move. And they had this goop over it. So I thought I was fucking blind. I thought they screwed up. And I was like, anesthesia. I'm trying to rip out my IV. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Get that doctor in here. I'm going to fucking kill him. I'm going to get him in here. I'm like, my dad's holding me down. Like, it was just a whole, whole thing. And they took that off and I could see. And yay. Like, everything was great. Um, I think I may have said something about his wife, too. Like, I was going to do some bad things to her. Um, it was just, you know how you get through anesthesia? Yeah. You say, like, weird stuff. I've heard. Apparently, it was bad. <laughs> it was, like, really bad to where I apologized to the doctor afterwards. I was like, sorry about that, man. Um, so, Intense, so when, man. when my eye ended up swelling, I could see my open eyeball with the piece of gauze hanging out. It's crazy. So, after that, they, they transplanted a bit of the white of my eye. Um, put a silicone ball inside of the white of my eye, sewed that shut, and now I walk into walls. And your headstock, I hit your, you hit me in the head with your headstock last night. Well, actually, I hit my head on your headstock because I couldn't see it. Oh, sorry about that. Don't, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's my blind spot. But anyways, yeah, that's kind of the Reader's Digest version Dang. of how I lost my eye. That's insane. It was good times. I still do everything I did before. I just run yeah. into a few more walls. Yeah. <laughs> and walk off front of stages. Uh, that's good. You're you're thriving. You're you're making it work. You even drive. I do drive, and I you know what? As far as the I don't even know if I should say. As far as the DMV knows, I have two eyes still. Right, right. <laughs> I've passed two DMV vision tests with both eyes. That's crazy. I put my prosthetic in, and I have this sweet little gap between my fingers, and she just like cover your right eye and read that and I was like so I just read it and she goes she didn't cover your right eye I was like oh sorry so I covered it I can't see out of it anyway so I covered it up and she's like all right and she's like all right cover your left and I did it and I just read through my fingers and she kind of looks at me funny and she goes read that one so I like turn my head to the left and read the one on the left and she goes all right here you go to go take your picture down the road nice insane um, something a little waff about this guy I don't know <laughs> it's weird that right eye just didn't move well, uh, we're heading. We're heading to Austin. Last night in Dallas was awesome. We played Canton Hall. That was formerly Deep Elm Live. Yeah. Where we played, you know, a couple times. Yeah, um, totally. But yeah, it was pretty cool. It was good. Yeah, it was I'm looking great. forward to Austin though. It's been way too long. Yeah, I want to say, I don't think I've been to Austin in like a decade, probably. Really? Yeah. It's been that long. I think so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Tumble Down played quite a bit. You know, South by Southwest. We played Austin, our own shows, a bunch of times. Yeah. So I've been to Austin a lot, but right. yeah, it makes me, it's been a minute. It's been probably since South by Southwest or Emos or whenever we played yeah. one of those. One yeah, of those, I can't remember. Yeah. I feel like it was South oh, by Southwest. Oh, Stubbs. It was uh, 2005, I want to say. We played 2005 wow. at Stubbs or it could have been a little later, but that could have been the last one. Crazy. Yeah. All right. Well. Anything you guys want to add? This was a crazy <laughs> podcast. Thanks for all your stories, everybody. I feel tired. I feel yeah. worn out from this. I was like, just sitting here, I'm like, 
Did I really just say all of that stuff publicly? It's good. <laughs> I feel like we're closer now. Yeah, sure they did, did, Trevor. You sure <laughs> did. I learned a lot today. I learned a hell of a lot today about my crew guys, and, and I still love you guys. In fact, I think I love you more. <laughs> all right, thanks for doing it. Deadly afraid There's moments like this That I'm gonna miss When I'm dead and gone And I can't kiss my kids Will they look up to the sky And think about me Hey, you guys made it all the way to the end I commend you for doing that It was pretty gnarly Thank you Thanks for tuning in to the podcast Thanks to my crew for all those stories The humility involved in telling these stories Was, was epic So thank you for doing it embarrassing stories and not even childhood stories these are adults these are grown men people i'm just shaking my head right now just shaking my head <laughs> anyway mxpx.com for pre-ordering best life ipa you guys are going to love this beer um i love the beer i've only had it once i tried it when we when we got together and we we tasted and we tweaked and and kind of talked about what we wanted and we came up with best life ipa um but yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on the final brew. October 12th, I'm going to start shipping. You can pre-order the beer now. But October 12th, I'm going to be playing a Songs and Stories show at the Roxy Theater in Bremerton, Washington. Tickets are up right now. No ticket fees. Links on mxpx.com. And uh, Tom and Yuri are going to be joining me for stories. And Chris is going to open up doing some of his own songs. So uh, it's going to be a good celebration. That I, I just, I'm looking forward to it. So tune in for that. Don't tune in for that. Actually, come out to that if you can. If not, tune into the podcast next week. All right. Until then, cheers.